Well, hi there and welcome. Take two with Jerry and Debbie and you on EWTN Radio. I am Jerry Usher along with Debbie Giorgiani. It's your show and you will definitely want to weigh in on the topic today. We are kind of, we cover all different aspects of life on this program. We love to have some, you know, some theological shows, apologetic shows, but then we talk about just the real important things of life. And, and sometimes we have a little bit of a, just kind of a fun show. And I think that's what we're going to have today because Debbie, we're going to be talking about different games that individuals mm-hmm. and families like to play. We're talking like board games, not board like games. psychological games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Should have, should have clarified that. Right. So board games. And I like how you said, Jerry, we're, we're going to address like some of the important things of life. Yes, board games. They are. <laughs> well, you know, you gather with family, you gather with friends during the holidays. And what do you do? You break out the board games. You open up the closet, you pull out all these games, and you start playing, having some laughs, fun. It, it's really a beautiful time. So we, we really are interested because we love the Take Two family. Um, and I think this topic is so timely, Jerry, and I'll share in a moment why. Uh, we want to ask you the question, what games um, uh, does your family like to play? So what games do, do you enter into as a family or a group of friends or even at your community you live at? Maybe you're in a uh, retirement community because I know my mom, when when she was at um, some of these wonderful places, um, they would play lots of board games, you know. They even play bingo, all sorts of things, um, cards, cards. Um, and, and it's a wonderful way for us to just find out what, what, what creative ways people are spending the time to build fellowship. So here is the number, 833-288-3986. And you certainly do not have to be Catholic to call in. We're interested in what board games your family plays and uh, the favorites. It can be the old-time favorites like Monopoly and other games like that or chess. And uh, we would love to hear from you. So fill the phone lines right now because Matt Kabinsky is interested in what games board games you guys play all right we'd love to have you be on the show today 833-288-EWTN 833-288-3986 and debbie and i are our producer ace we were having a little trip trip of our own down memory lane before we came on the air here talking about some of the board games and other games that we used to like to play uh things like you know clue debbie you mentioned chess a moment ago uh, monopoly scrabble battleship I remember the remember that operation game where you had to very carefully take the twi- tweezers down in there and do an operation on on the on the game thing itself. So, dear friends, maybe maybe you've fallen out of the habit of playing games. Maybe you still do. Like Debbie said, you just have a regular time. You get together with friends. What about family game night? Things like that. Eight three three two eight eight three nine eight six. Boy, this definitely is. Um, uh I don't know who positioned this show on the calendar, but boy, oh boy, is the the Holy Spirit got a funny sense of humor. Um, Today is my big brother Michael's birthday. So he listens regularly. And Michael, happy birthday. Jerry and I love you very much. So happy birthday, Michael. And Michael and I, he was the next in line. There's six of us. So Michael was the one who was in charge of constantly entertaining his little baby sister. We (laughs) played Battleship like crazy, Jerry. And we played played the game of life remember the game of life Mm -hmm, where you mm -hmm. stick the little stick figures in the car and we just i we wore out that game so um so many games and then you know what else we played jerry i don't know if you had this we had that you remember the electronic basketball and and like football where the Uh where the the little characters would jump all over the place or it had these uh, magnetic things that you'd shoot the basket and stuff we had those as well. My parents were very big on buying. They had no problem <laughs> buying a ton of games for us to entertain ourselves. But um, did you ever play those games? We had the best time at that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If it had to do with sports, I definitely played it. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, half of our lines are taken right now, which is a great great news for us because we have callers calling in. But great news for you as well because some lines are still open. 833 288 EWTN, 833-288-3986. What about, uh, let's see, I'm looking through a list here. Um, there, there's some, a twister. What about twister? Oh, that's pain. <laughs> that can be painful. I know. <laughs> Hard there's on the op- back. <laughs> there's Operation. I'm looking at a list here Oh, right I now. loved Operation. Operation yeah. was a fun game. Mousetrap. Remember that? Mousetrap. Mouse yeah, that you had yeah. to really be creative with Mousetrap, yeah. What else? And any anything else? How about the the game Taboo or or Apples to Apples or or um, Clue? 
I mean, it goes on and on. Did you play any of those? Yes, we did. And, you know, one game that I used to play a lot and love, and I'm not sure I'd even remember how to play it now. It's been so long, but that's backgammon. Mm -hmm. I, I used to love to play backgammon. I love backgammon. Oh, you're you're gonna crack up at this, Jerry. I my I played backgammon for years, and Marty does not know how to play it. So we decided that when it when if we ever went on went on quick trips, we would bring a backgammon set. Do you know how hard it is to get one that's not? First of all, they're very expensive, or the cheap ones are not that good. And so I bought two. Uh, very cheap, inexpensive traveling backgammon sets. Do you know they have the the board incorrect? It's made oh, is that in right? it's made in a foreign country, and the board is incorrect. Hmm. Two of them. Wow! So that kind of messes up the game. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> so my husband goes get a mat, get a sharpie and just correct the uh, the the lines on backgammon. I said I can't do that, so I'm I'm still looking for a backgammon set that's not yeah. like you know fifty dollars. I really got into chess when I was a, a kid. We had a stepfather who was very, very good at chess, and so I learned a lot, a lot from him. And it's a, it's an amazing game, chess, as you know, Debbie, because it takes a lot of you know, focus and concentration and planning ahead and looking where you mm -hmm. want to move each piece on on the board. And mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's what's great is you know when you get a checkmate, that just feels so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It, it sure does. We had a marble set that was made in Mexico. My oh. parents brought it back from a convention on a MetLife convention. Beautiful marble set. So we had that in the living room. So we played chess quite often. Um, but how about you? Uh, we, we're, we're, we're going back and forth down memory lane and even sharing some of the, um, the, the favorites of board games. We want to hear from you. So what do you do in your family with your friendship circles that you um, kind of have fun? And pass the time and and uh, have some laughs. 833-288-3986. That's the number to call. Share with us what board games or other games that you guys play in your families. But remember, we're not talking psychological games. We're talking like fun games. <laughs> <laughs> Although psychology plays a role in all of them, probably. True. Um, but we have a lot of a lot of calls we're going to get to in a moment. But still, room for you. Take two, family. Let's have a great fun conversation here about board games and other types of games maybe you grew up with maybe you don't play them anymore maybe your kids have kind of taken that on and you're able to teach them how to do it 833-288-3986 save the date saturday august 26th is the day and birmingham alabama is the place for the 2023 ewtn family celebration we're celebrating mother angelica's love for the eucharist and join us to mark the centennial year of mother's birth. Make your plans now to attend this free event. More details coming soon at our Family Celebration webpage, EWTN.com slash Family Celebration. Faith is a precious gift from God. As the largest religious media network in the world, EWTN has an important role in educating others about our Catholic faith and spreading the good news of salvation. We invite you to explore our numerous pages of historical faith documents, prayers, teachings, and other current issues in Catholicism today. Visit EWTN.com and click Catholicism. EWTN, the Global Catholic Network. The most original Catholic content is on EWTN Radio. Tonight on EWTN Live. Don Johnson shows how inherent flawed misunderstandings can arise when people rely on individual readings. EWTN Live with me, Father Mitch Packwood, tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern on EWTN TV and radio. We're going to enjoy this conversation. Hope you'll be a part of it. 833-288-3986. Any uh, particular games, board games? Maybe my, my brother John used to be crazy about this little, it was a small, this little basketball game, and you had to get the basket in the hoop. It was a bit more of a video game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got totally into um, Pac Man, was like massively oh, popular. If I had yeah. a nickel for every quarter I put into Pac Man, mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, you and I'd be, I'd be a rich man. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not, so that's why we yeah, like you better. I know. Before <laughs> we go to the humble. calls. <laughs> Please plan to visit EWTN's site 
to uh, dedicated to Mother Angelica where you can celebrate her remarkable life. It is filled with photos, milestones, heartfelt stories, and her wit and words that have inspired the hearts of all ages throughout the years. Visit EWTN.com slash Mother Angelica today. Mm -hmm. Better yet, if you've never been to Hansville, try and squeeze that in. It's a must-do during your lifetime. So, again, it's EWTN.com slash Mother Angelica to see her memorial. Mm -hmm. Yahtzee. Michael M. on YouTube. We're waving to you. Yeah, Yahtzee. And by the way, I was just joking. We love rich folks. You can be rich in many ways. Jerry Mm -hmm. is rich in... Let me think about that for a minute. Hmm. Well, you have a sense of humor, and you're rich in, uh, I think, in your faith. Sure. There you go. There you go. I had to really think about that for a second, but no, no, I'm just teasing. So it's all good. You can be, uh, it's wonderful. Okay, so we're having fun today learning about the games uh, that you uh, play in your homes and in your with your friends. We'd like you to weigh in on this. Jill, please call back. Apparently, we, we, we may have dropped you. Um, you were on the line. Jill, please call back. A shout out to our friend Jill, who's one of the Take Two family members. Everybody who calls in, you are immediately brought into the Take Two family. So we have two open phone lines uh please uh call there's jill's coming back way way to go jill see how quickly the take two family responds Mm -hmm. um you know and it's it's beautiful so uh jerry twister's coming in again all sorts of uh these these uh, really great games that are i think they're just so how do you ever they're timeless you know Mm, uh, they really are. And the thing is, you know, with especially young people today, they found uh, things, I should say, not they found, things have been created. So many different things, especially with technology that, uh, you know, it's it's really, in a way, it's it's too bad, you know, that they sometimes kids don't spend that time, you know, sitting down with other people, playing a game that requires, you know, a little bit of mm-hmm. thinking, thought process and things like that. Maybe in your family, they still do. Share that with yeah. us at 833 833- Two eight eight three nine eight six. And Jerry, you mentioned Scrabble, I believe, but you know, you didn't. I was waiting for you to rem- to mention my. It's actually one of my favorites. Do you remember Boggle? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Boggle's really good. Mm-hmm. Boggle's a great game. Okay, we fill up those last two phone lines. I'm having fun today. This is really good, and it's midweek, which is really nice. Normally, I have this kind of uh, light spirit on Fridays, but this is kind of nice to do this on, you know, a Wednesday. So let's hear what Catherine has to say. Catherine is first up in uh, listening on the Station of the Cross in Boston, Massachusetts. Hello, Catherine. Hi there. Welcome. I didn't know I was getting on the air. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Are you okay with that? We play, yeah, we play a lot of games, um, board games. We play a lot of cards and backgammon in our family. Mm. Any, any, any you love in particular, Catherine? Uh, well, we play a lot of gym and backgammon and risk, strategico. Mm-hmm. But probably my favorite is when there's enough of us to play charades. Oh, charades, oh, yeah. like Pictionary charades. Yes, I love that, Catherine. Catherine, on the on the um, card games, do you, have you ever played hand and foot? I love that game. No. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> I haven't. It's actually I've never quite. Heard of it. Yeah, you should look it up. It's actually a little bit difficult, I think, to learn. But once you start playing it, it is a blast. I, um, my uh, husband and I, we we um, are are. Um, our great aunt and uncle, they, they shared it with us. It was really amazing, and it kind of passed down through the family. So, um, yeah, it's called Hand and Foot. It's kind of interesting. And then there's also all the other, you know, card games that, that are always a blast. They're always good to play on uh, if you're on a long plane flight, I think. What do you think, Catherine? I absolutely agree with you. We love to play. I mean, we will play gin on the plane, play space. Uh, when you get to, you know, wherever, a group of us will play hard. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just fun. It's a great way to turn the TV off, which I'm a big fan of, and just be together. Right. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That you've obviously you and your family are familiar with a lot of fun games. Catherine, thank you so much for mm-hmm. sharing that with us here on the radio today. We are so grateful for your call. And she is very gracious because she just opened a phone line for somebody at 833-288-3986. Michael on YouTube. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say Mahjong is another one, the tile game. It's very hard to play. Some games are very hard to learn. Yeah. 
Yeah. Have you I agree. noticed that? I agree. Yeah. yeah. That can be difficult if you have kids, you know, because it's hard to teach them. But it, but, it, but it expands, you know, their creativity, I think. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I, I didn't play those games, you know, any of those that required a lot of thinking. I just didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, my goodness. Michael is yes. watching the video stream on YouTube. He says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's Domingo. S- excuse me. Domingo. Uh, mm-hmm. Domingo says, every now and then we like to play Twister. And we used to play Scrabble. And word game. So thank you, Domingo, for weighing in on that. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, folks, if you're watching the video stream on YouTube or Facebook, you can post your uh, your game uh, answer there. You can email it, take2 at EWTN.com. we got several emails already to get to. You can post on the show website. Or best of all, we can hear your voice when you call 833-288-3986. Okay, Jill did call back. Thank you, Jill, from the great state of Texas, listening on Sirius XM 130. Hello, Jill. Welcome back. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Yes, Thank happy you. Wednesday. <laughs> yes. Um, no, your call screener and I were visiting, and I told him I have two favorite games. Um, one, as a child growing up, my dad and I just battled it out with Battleship. Uh-huh. And so that was fun and great memories and I think kind of like rite of passage the night before I married, we had one last round. <laughs> oh, oh, I and love so that. that. Was fun. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's kind of my guy. So, and then I got married and I learned a new game and it was called Wahoo. And it's a marble game that all my kids love and we have four children and they've learned it, you know, at four or five years of age and it's kind of about strategy and getting the other person out and getting back to your home spot. So it's mm. fun. Nice. I have never heard of it. Yeah. I'm going to look it up. Wahoo. I've never wow. heard of it. Well, I think that's so, it's priceless, Jill, that you mm-hmm. had that one last round, like you said, before your wedding. When you mentioned Battleship, um, first thing that came to my mind is the, I, their famous slogan, you sunk my battleship. My battleship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we used to say it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Jill, you know, uh, does... You probably can't watch the movie Father of the Bride 1 and 2 because it reminds me of when she, the night before her wedding, she had that last basketball game with her dad. Did you ever think of that? Kind of similar. Yes, ma'am. We mm. actually took yeah. a picture after after that last game, and it's, it's a treasured picture for me, for sure. Yeah, wow. yeah, nice. totally. I cannot watch that movie. When I watch it, I just start bawling. I'm like a I'm like a baby with that movie because of that that connection between father and daughter. So you that is precious to you, Jill, and you'll always have it. It's yours. You know that that's an incredible memory that not many people get to say that about their their dad. So you're blessed. I do. I feel very blessed, and he's still here. He's eighty eighty three. So so blessed. Oh, what's oh, his wonderful. first name, Jill? Tom. Tom. Okay, I'm going to put him in the book. And if he's listening, Tom, you're an awesome dad. Look, the whole world just just heard what a great um, private, you know, personal, memorable moment you shared with your daughter. That is incredible. Thank you, Jill, for trusting us and sharing it with us. Well, y'all are great. Have a, have a nice day. Thank you. You too. Uh, 833-288-3986. Pam, via email at take2 at EWTN.com, says, Yahtzee, many hours playing this game with our family. And I remember that well. That's more of the dice, right? And, and um, the cup, you put the dice in there? And yes, yes, I okay. believe so. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe so. Well, I And so. then we were just talking about Jenga, too. That one, and Ace and I were saying we don't like to the, the clean up the mess when that thing tumbles. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What's the one with the sticks and the marbles that were in the cup, the long cup, and the same thing happened? You pull the sticks out, and then yeah. it all starts. It, it, it made such a loud noise. Oh, you, you know, know? It's, it's, at, at this age, it's right on the tip of my tongue, but it's probably going to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold I, on. I said I just, you're, I said you, I said you were rich in many ways, and but you do have great recall. That's why I always lean on you for that recall. But you also have at your fingertips um, the internet, so that always helps. <laughs> I okay, can't let's find go. It, but I'm, I'm reminded find... of pool or billiards. Maybe, maybe, maybe someone listening. Oh. Used to, I used to play hours and hours of pool all the time. You did in a yeah. in a in a private home or in a pool hall? <laughs> uh, usually a pool hall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had my own stick for a while. I was. You did? The, the did you have your own with... carrying case too? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Wow, I I'm impressed. Been a long time. Okay, Patrick is up next in in. Uh, Gillette, Wyoming, Real Presence Radio. I hope I got your city correct. Patrick, welcome. 
Thank you. Yes, you did. Thank you. I we I was really intrigued with your your topic today. We have several games we play with our family, but one that's kind of uh, dear to us is called Five Crowns. It's a card game that's more like a rummy, but it's got its own own deck, and there's actually five different suits. Mm-hmm. And this one here, uh, we had an eighty some year old guy that actually taught this to me, and we've worn out a couple of decks that we play it that much. Hmm. Wow! Wow! And it's I'm, called I'm, it's called Five Crowns, Patrick. Uh, yes, yeah, Five okay. Crowns. Five Crowns. And okay. It, 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 Game isn't over until the keys go wild. But <laughs> it's, it, uh, you know, seven to adult. I mean, it's, I say, I've played it with friends who come over and we'll sit around and you know, glass of wine or whatever and play Five Crowns and visit and, and just have a good afternoon or a good evening. Hmm. That sounds great. Yeah. Great fellowship, too, but I'm sure. Couple, comes that. Yeah. Yeah. There are a couple more that I hadn't heard. One is Phase 10. Uno's the old standby, and then Sky Joe. Mm. Those are some games that, that our family enjoys. Okay, I'm writing those down. We're, I'm going to look into this. This is really fun. Thank you so much, Patrick. Don't you think we need to get back to that? Because it, it sounds like you had a lot of fun, you know, gathering together, you know, relaxing and playing these games. It, it kind of keeps your, your mind going. You, you, there's, there, I'm sure there's laughter. There's, you know, questions. There's c- competition, healthy competition. I think it's wonderful. What do you think? Oh, yes. And you, you mentioned uh, hand and foot. We used to have a group of us, and it was like, all three, four, five couples, and we would get together and yeah. play hand and fist all day long. You know, yeah. somebody put on a, a, a pot of soup and mm-hmm. you just sit and visit and, oh, yeah, scream at each other because somebody's cheating or, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. Exactly. That is so, that's so cool. I love that. But, you know, when I was talking about my, our, our, Aunt and uncle shared that with us, and uh, you're right. The one the one problem with hand and foot, Patrick, is it's it's a long game. It's for hours. You're you're spot on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I recall one time we uh, somebody went out too quick, and it delayed the game like two hours more. Wow. It was like, yeah, wow. it, it really did. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, Patrick. Thanks for weighing in today. We really appreciate it. That's awesome, contributing to this wonderful discussion. Call us again. And Jerry, you know, Patrick makes a a, a good point there. You know, we're in a world where everybody's telling us, hurry, hurry, hurry. You're, you know, you text and you have to text back in eight seconds. You have to email back in, in, in 40 minutes or somebody thinks, you know, you've dropped off the, the face of the earth, you know, and, and Patrick was just sharing about a card game that can take four hours. You know, that, that requires time. Precious mm-hmm. time that Attention. we should be yeah. And, yeah, to spend with our family and friends. Maybe that's what we need to get back to. Yeah, certainly couldn't hurt things. Um, we have a full phone lines right now. Again, we're, we're talking about any board games, card games, video games you grew up with, or do you still have uh, family mo- game night, or do you do these, do these things on your own? There is, uh, we, we have, we will open up a phone line here in a moment at 833-288-EWTN, 833-288. 2883986 before we go to father joe father hang on just yeah. for a minute we got a short break coming up that we yep. we can't move and we don't want you and to be jerry, rushed yes jerry i just got two messages from our take two family members one of them is is a is a little bit you know they're trying to challenge me they said come on debbie you have to remember the name of the game it's called kerplunk kerplunk <laughs> <laughs> yes i remember it vividly and it's very loud very loud marble game in a in a clear cylinder. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry. Did you re- we were referring to the email that just came in? Oh, did Kerplunk come in on an email too? Yeah, Charles sent. Uh, he says oh. the game with the marbles and sticks you were thinking of was Kerplunk. <laughs> he said the spelling might be wrong, but I loved that game. God bless Chuck. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chuck, for weighing well, in on that. I was I, I tried to describe it and I actually Googled in, you know, clear cylinder with the sticks and nothing came up and then, then we got all these messages. So Charles emailed and then we got direct messages coming in from the Take Two family. I love you guys. You guys are so quick with computers and, and, and cell phones. 
But it does show, um, you know, Google doesn't know everything. <laughs> because I, That's I true. did a Google search and I didn't find that. So oh, wow. we may have to See? talk to them. They're kind of slipping on the job here a little bit. <laughs> it's an oldie but a goodie, though, the, the Kerplunk. I do. It is loud, Charles, though. I have to tell you. Do you remember when you pulled the last stick and it all, it all, mm. all the marbles click? You know, it just, it's, it's kind of, it could always, wake up a sleeping baby in the next room. <laughs> well, and you're always losing pieces to games. You remember that? Yeah. You know, a lot of pieces that have things you move around and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. All right, oh, Father, yeah. hang on. Father Joe is in uh, King, uh, St. John's, Arizona, and he'll have our next take on this topic today on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie at 833-288-3986. Board games, video games, games of chance, games of skill. What did you like to play and what do you still like to play? Tomorrow morning on the Sunrise Morning Show. Dr. John Bergsma will discuss the story of Adam and Eve in Love Basics for Catholics. Father Robert Nixon continues to unpack the meditations on death attributed to Thomas Akempis, focusing on the final judgment. Plus, our Catholic counselor, Kevin Prendergast, will offer his thoughts on how Lent can help us heal from trauma. The Sunrise Morning Show, tomorrow at 6 a.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. This is Father Leo Padalinghug. Lord our God, we pray for an end to abortion, which we know is motivated by fear, fear that we cannot provide food for our children. So Lord God, as the divine physician, but also as the eternal food of the Eucharist, help us to have faith that even in our fear, we can trust that you will always provide for life especially the most vulnerable. We pray, Lord, for mercy on all of those who out of fear have succumbed to the temptation to eliminate a child. But also, Lord, we pray for the grace and the strength that all of those who are questioning the gift of life will experience such a deep conversion that they will always remember that you will provide for us so that we can not only love life, but we will love it and respect it by taking on an attitude for the gift and sanctity of human life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. On EWTN Radio Essentials, listen for the Mass every two hours, plus rosaries, chaplets, stations of the cross, and other devotionals. EWTN Radio Essentials is on the EWTN app and at EWTN.com. Dr. David Anders here. Where is purgatory in the Bible? Why confess my sins to a priest? Find out more at 2 p.m. Eastern on Call to Communion. Now, back to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Okay, we, we are back talking about board games today on um, Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Full phone, full phone lines. We can. It's amazing. You guys are just really taking on this topic as you always do. We love the Take Two family. So we're going to move back to the phones. And Father Joe has been waiting so patiently. Well, that's that's kind of standard because he's clergy. And St. John's, Arizona, <laughs> uh, Sirius XM one thirty. Hello, Father. Welcome. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> Great. Doing well. How are you? Thank you, Father. I, I'm good. Thank you. I enjoy your show a great deal. Oh, thanks. Beautiful. Thank you. So tell us, what games, what do you what do you think about this topic, oh. Father? Pardon me? I, I love this topic. Uh, I play a game called Word Feud with my brother. Uh, it's like Scrabble, and we play it over the Internet. He's in Connecticut, and I'm in Arizona, but uh, we play almost daily and almost instantaneously so it's it's a lot of fun and it keeps us in communication with each other we're over 2000 miles apart so yeah and my mother made us promise that we would remain friends no matter what and oh, wow. we did promise that yeah and oh. we're very different we're very different but we do get along and uh, mm -hmm. and we this game gives us an opportunity to stay in touch and keep in contact and, and we get some conversation and not a lot, but, uh, uh, but mostly playing the game yeah. and, uh, mm -hmm. we're pretty evenly matched. Although I think I have an edge on him, but I, <laughs> maybe cause I'm single, I'm single and he's married. So <laughs> he may, I may have more time on my hands than he does. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, Father, I, I was wondering if somebody was going to bring up these games that could be played online pretty much around the world, because that's a lot of our young people today are just 
really, really in, in wrapped in, involved in, in so many of those things. And I'm, I'm not familiar with this game, but I looked it up online. It looks a little bit like kind of a Scrabble type game. Would you say? Exactly. We we mm-hmm. always enjoyed Scrabble when we were a little closer and get could get together from time to time. But uh, this is very similar to Scrabble, mm-hmm. if not the same thing, actually. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but mm-hmm. uh, it's it's uh, enjoyable. He likes it. He's 80 years old. I'm 74. Uh, he likes it because it keeps his mind active, uh, mm-hmm. which is important as we get older, you know, to stay uh, somewhat uh, uh, in communication active. and, right. you know, using our brain cells and so forth. Right. So, uh, what a novel like idea. It. I like it. <laughs> so wait a minute, Father. You're trying to tell me you have a little bit of an edge um, over him in the sense of this game. Now, it, sound, it sounds to me like you're the baby brother. So is that is that a problem at all with him or does he let you win like all the time? <laughs> no, no, no. We're pretty ruthless with each other. Actually, <laughs> we, we we go for the jugular. We've always been that way. <laughs> good, games. good, good. Competitive brothers. I love that. So, Father, uh, real quickly, you're in St. John's, Arizona. Are you getting snow up there? I'm in the valley. We did. Uh, we had quite a bit last week and a couple of weeks ago, but uh, this week is sunny and and it's warming up nicely, and the snow is going away. Fantastic. Wow. Um, just a couple quick things, Father. We'll let you go on this. Um, Debbie, I'm sure we'll concur on each of these things. First of all, thank you for being a priest. Okay, that mm-hmm. that means so much to us here. Um, we are we are both huge on promoting vocations and, and supporting our, our priests and seminarians. So, thank you so much for answering that call. And also, thank you. Um, you, you know, Father, better than we do how busy priests are, and they don't take time to, you know, eat well sometimes or to get recreation or do things like you're doing with your brother. You know, you're, you're taking some time out. It's, it's refreshing. It's recreation kind of takes you away from a lot of the troubles that you might experience as a priest with people, things going on in people's lives. So thank you also for, you know, giving you a little bit of self-care in, in the form of this game. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, a sister, there was a sister Jean on Fox and Friends yesterday. She's a hundred and three mm-hmm. years old, but she's still going strong. She's like a chaplain at the Loyola University in Chicago, and she was talking about how she uh, stayed uh, active up and she's still active at a hundred and three. Mm-hmm. And uh, she said she eats well and she sleeps well, and mm-hmm. uh, she did mention prayer as a as a part of that, in which she shares with the the students, uh, the basketball players. She's like a chaplain for the basketball team. Yeah, so very interesting. Yeah, I caught that too, Father. I saw that too. So that's beautiful. What question I wanted to ask you, you, if you feel comfortable, can you share your brother's first name with us? Ron. Ron, okay. I just want to put you in the book. So did it was your parents that made you promise to stay close as brothers? My mother. Hmm. Your mother. She wow. made us vow to remain friends because we're very different. I'm mm-hmm. obviously a fairly good Catholic, and my brother is not practicing the faith. So if you could pray for him mm-hmm. uh, for sure. to get back to the sacrament, that'd be great. Absolutely, That's, well, that's why we put him in the mm-hmm. prayer book, Father. Yeah, that's... Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we will definitely do that. I think that is so beautiful. Your mother, you know, having her, her sons be close. I think that is so precious. It shows the love that she has for you. And, and I just, the reason why I say that father is I have two sons, um, myself and I, I always made them promise that uh, early on when they were, when they came into this world to stay close and they have been close, um, and they're in their thirties and, um, and late 20s. So it's it's really good when siblings stay close, especially if it's a smaller family. And so I agree with everything Jerry said. God bless you, Father. Thank you so much for saying yes to your vocation. Take care. Bye now. God bless, Father. Wow. Beautiful call among all of the other beautiful calls that are coming in mm-hmm. today at 833-288-3986. Talking today on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie and you about... Uh, Board games, uh, video games, card games, uh, do you have any favorites today in this, at this point of your life or some that you played before? 
3986. And by the way, um, if you haven't heard this yet before from me or Debbie, April 24th through the 28th, we're calling that You Choose Week. It's gonna, the topics are going to be entirely what you, the Take Two family, want to, to want to have us to air. So you can submit your choices even right now, or better yet, listen to the rest of the show, then do it at uh, taketwoshow.com. And there's a Submit Today button pinned to the top of that page there. And you may just get your topic aired during You Choose Week, which is April 24th through the 28th. I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I am as well. That's coming up quick. So you got to get your um, suggestions in. But let's go to Kathy. Kathy's in Baltimore, Maryland on Sirius XM 130. Hello, Kathy. Welcome to Take Two. Hello. How are you? Great. (laughs) Great. How are you? So I just want to piggyback on the one caller, Patrick. Uh, Five Crowns is a card game. And due to COVID, there wasn't much on TV, and not that I'm a TV watcher to begin with, but it allowed my husband and I and my daughter to play a lot of games. So Five Mm. Crowns was one of the card games. And then we still love to play Old Maid, even though my grandchildren are 15, 13, and 11, because the 11-year-old always has the um, look on her face that she has the Old Maid. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Rubby, Rummy Cube was a big Rummy hit Cube, for us yeah. during COVID as well. Yeah, I love Rummy Cube. Wow, an old maid. Oh, yeah, I know. These are all these big goodies. I'm telling you, this is so great that we're doing this show because we need to bring it back, everything, because everything that was – you know, legendary and traditional. And it it is even from our parents' age and our grandparents, it's important because it had depth. Do you find that, Kathy? The the, the old, the kind of the old, even though they they seem lighthearted, they had a depth to it and a wholesomeness to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and some of the games that uh, I remember playing as a child was Parkeasy, Sorry, Mm -hmm. and Trouble. But yes. more importantly was um, my mother taught us to play pinochle at a very young age. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's just, it, pinochle just always brings back such great memories. I, yeah. As I was growing up and in my young adult days, I knew so many people who played pinochle. I would sit there and watch them play. Mm-hmm. I never mm-hmm. got into it. I, for some reason, um, I, it just didn't attract me, but I started to learn how kind of the game goes. And very, very, um, it, it takes a lot of you know, skill and memory, mm-hmm. uh, if I remember right, memory, power, and all kinds of and stuff. And attention. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, attention, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Kathy, Anything we need else, to bring Kathy? it. We, yeah, <laughs> we need to bring it back, Kathy, because too many people are on their gadgets just by themselves, and that's why I think I personally believe we have a high rate of depression because we need to interact. We're made for community. What do you think? I agree totally, very much. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, God bless you, Kathy, in Baltimore. Have a great day, and I hope you're having a very fruitful Lent so far. We're already into the second week of Lent, hard to believe. Wow. Uh, that line is open there if you'd like to jump on that. And uh, where are we going? I think we're going to go to Emma Lou next. Emma, Emma Lou. Lou is in Lake Placid, New York, listening on Light of Truth Radio. Hi, Emma Lou. Hello. I enjoy your show very much. I've got a different slant on things. Okay. Um, I had a friend that had dementia, in advanced stages of dementia, And there were a lot of things that he couldn't do. But one of the things that he started doing was playing um, card games and also um, dominoes and checkers because it wasn't something that you could teach him at that point. But he, you know, he had done that as a as a younger person, and so therefore, Mm -hmm. when his dementia got, he would do it by the hour, and it took up a lot of time because he was in a nursing home and they spent a lot of time in their in their Mm -hmm. um, rooms. And so I was just stressing the importance of establishing these games when people are younger and they have, you know, everything going for them. So they have something as a reserve later on when they can't do things. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to put that perspective in there. That was my observation when I was taking care of my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I so agree with you um, because I have had the same situation happen with my mom being in an assisted living facility um, and the, the, the board games, uh, like I said, bingo, when they play bingo, when they uh, puzzles, when they did puzzles, I so agree because it's like muscle memory. It comes back. Uh, it reminded me of, of this one lady and, and, and kind of a transition to, to, uh, faith. This one lady, um, she had, it was not my mom, but, the, but this 
her one of the other residents had advanced dementia, just like you were talking about, Emily, and um, it, they they actually we actually brought in rosaries um and she could pray the rosary immediately she she knew how to pray the rosary because she had prayed it so many times when she was a kid isn't that fascinating how the muscle memory the brain works emilou right that it is because i it, now that you bring that up like i was doing rosary um up at the nursing home and and you know people that were just sort of comatose almost and when they came when it came you know they would bring them in to to Rosary, and, and it was amazing to see the reaction that they could actually say the mm-hmm. prayers. Mm-hmm. Everybody was just sort of standing back, amazed at the whole. Because <laughs> yeah. we did communion, a uh, communion service, and then we did Rosary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Or when they answer the mass parts too, they can they they can recall the mass parts. It's pretty incredible, Jerry. Yeah. Well, Emily, what a beautiful gift that God gave him, and it seems like it was a gift to everybody who came in contact with him as well. So. Thank you, Emily, for the call from Lake Placid. We appreciate that. Uh, real quickly, before we go to Don in New York, we had an email from Gloria. She says, hello, happy hump day to you both. Mm-hmm. Overall, we still love playing the classic games, Trouble, Shoots and classic. Ladders, mm-hmm. Clue, Dominoes, Rummy, Jenga, Monopoly, mm-hmm. and Uno. And she says, mm-hmm. a shout out to all my, uh, my Hispanic brothers and sisters who love playing Loteria. I haven't mm-hmm. heard of that one, oh. but... Wow. Gloria is uh, giving a shout out to all of her brothers and sisters who love to play. I hope I said that right. Lot- Loteria. Okay, it's Lent. Okay, we're supposed to be telling the truth, right? And and <laughs> and being very honest about things. I want to ask the question: Those of you who played Monopoly as a kid or even as an adult, did you ever hide extra money underneath the board? Okay, did you ever hide extra money underneath the board? That's the question. That's My a answer? whole show in itself, I think. <laughs> <laughs> did you? I did. Oh, probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah because absolutely. you could count the other person's money across the way to see if they were ready to go bankrupt. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that was hilarious. Or, oh, that's so true. Or when you get frustrated with Monopoly, that's the one game I understand. Ace is correct. Ace McKay, our producer, just weighed in. He's spot on. Did you know that Monopoly is the one game that people throw the board? Is that right? No, I didn't yeah, know it, that. Yeah, it, it, it ignites such a... Such a Fury and, and kind of agitation. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, it's yeah. true. I read about it. You should read about it. I, I will. I'll do that right after the show. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe during Don's, the show. You take it from here. Yeah, yeah. Don's coming up next in New York on Sirius XM 130. Hello, Don. Welcome. Oh, hi. Thank you. Fun, uh, it's a fun topic. Um, a few things. Um, a few years ago, my wife bought me a bocce set. And we were living in the city at the time, and I was kind of perplexed as to when I was going to be able to use it. But in her foresight, my brother eventually bought a nice home in Connecticut. And whenever the family gathers, it's a big game that we play. We have competition. It's like a tournament type of thing. And we get to have a lot of fun with that. Um, there's another simple game that I wanted to mention. Uh, it's a card game. And it's modeled after an old TV show called Concentration. Mm-hmm. And all you do, you turn over all the cards, and it's, you have to pick uh, matches. And I play that with my grandson. It's a great game to get your concentration going, and, uh, and um, it's a memory game. But the one the fun story that I have, I remember when my son was um, young and I looked out the door one day, and I see him and his friends kind of hanging out on the corner. And I said to them, uh, so what's going on? They said, well, we're bored. And I said, you know, you can't be bored. There's, there's 10 of you just here. Uh, and I, so I taught them a street, street game that we used to play when we were kids, like Kick the Can and Johnny on the Pony. And about a week went by, and I get a knock on the door from one of the kids, and he said, he said, uh, Sir, could you please teach us another game? So they were, uh, <laughs> they were really impressed with it. And we just got together recently with um, our neighbor, our then neighbors uh, of those, of two of those kids. And they were telling us how still to this day they recall that time of me teaching them how to play together out in the street and Basically, you know, you didn't need anything. All you needed was a can or you needed each other. And these were all games that were kind of 
the way I grew up, and uh, so so they were. I got I really appreciated that to hear that that was a mem- a memory for them. <laughs> that is awesome, Don. And thank you for following the prompting of the Holy Spirit to do that. And you're mentioning, you know, some of the games here. And it, t- it also reminds me of just we used to not only play these games, we'd build tree forts. We would go out uh, peel and bark, cascara bark to make a little bit of money. Um, these were the things that we had to do growing up. Now kids have a lot of other options as well. But um, you obviously have uh, have had some experience with these. And God bless your wife for picking out that game, that bocce set for you and then having mm-hmm. your uh, your brother's home in Connecticut to go to. What a great blessing. I love, I love Bocce. And I just wanted to say real quickly, Don, before we started the show, I just, I just always kind of do this. I I said, Lord, if I'll I'll really know you have a sense of humor, if somebody brings up concentration and you did Don. Uh So, so now I have to share it because our good Lord has a sense of humor. When I was really little, like super little, two or three years old, my brother Mike could probably attest to this of how old my parents used to bring over all of their friends because I was a whiz at concentration. They, that my parents um, found out later that I, that I have a photographic memory. So it's kind of interesting. I love that game concentration, Don. So I think I'm pretty set. I hope I, I, hope I don't have any age-related, um, you know, d- dementia or Alzheimer's. I think with, with my two-year-old, three-year-old experience with concentration, it, it may still hold. What do you think? That's a great story. Uh, my my memory of my my claim to fame with concentration was I was visiting my son who was attending Ave Maria University at the time, and uh, his roommate was uh, going for a PhD in microbiology. And I introduced them to the game of concentration, mm-hmm. and this old geezer won. So. Uh, <laughs> That's my wow. claim to fame. <laughs> oh wow, good deal. Oh well, you know what? If I ever get to New York, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to sit down and play that a game of concentration. Okay? You sound like you would be a tough match. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. Thanks, Don. Thanks for making our day. Amen. Amen. All of these calls are making our day, as you do every day, on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Uh, Kenneth in Denver, hold on. I just have to mention another program that I absolutely love. Me being too. a lifelong sports fan, yeah. It's called Blessed to Play. Blessed, the number two, play uh, with Ron Meyer. Sunday afternoons, 4.30 Eastern Time on EWTN Radio. Ron talks with athletes and sports professionals about the role that faith plays in their lives. And this week, his guest is Michael McGlynn, a former Notre Dame football player under, under Coach Lou Holtz when he was there. Um, host Ron Meyer talks with Michael about his time playing for the Irish and why he decided to start a new work that promotes Eucharistic adoration through storytelling. Interesting. Mm. This is going to be fascinating. Uh, blessed to play sa- Sunday afternoon, 430 Eastern Time on EWTN Radio. Mm-hmm. Great show. Okay, Kenneth in Denver, Colorado on Catholic Radio Network is up next. Hello, Kenneth. Uh, the name is Dennis. Oh, oh. De- Dennis. Okay, it was written the other way. But <laughs> Kenneth is a nice name, too. Okay, hello, Dennis. Let you, me start you, over. You, Welcome. You now have a nickname, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, uh, three and a half years ago, uh, shortly before my wife passed away, she passed away three and a half years ago, but shortly before she passed away, she bought a, uh, a game for our twin grandkids, who were five at the time, and it's called Noah's Ark Don't Rock the Boat Balancing Game. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's a boat that's about 12 inches long, about five inches wide, and represents Noah's Ark. Uh, and, and, of course, there are pairs of animals, uh, giraffes, zebras, elephants, tigers, etc. And there's a deck of cards, and each card uh, represents one of the animals on the boat. So you pick a card off the top of the deck, and whatever animal you get, you have to uh, put it on the boat. It, the, the boat is balanced on a spindle, so you have to kind of strategically place the animal on the deck of the boat and uh, typically start at the center and work your way out because each time you put an animal on, it tilts the deck of the boat one way or the other. At some point in time, uh, you're going to put, somebody's going to put an animal on the boat and it's going to tip the boat and all the uh, animals slide off. And it's just been great fun for my grandkids. Uh, we still play it today. It kind of teaches them technical skills and uh, the, the deck 
Uh, each one of the cards has an, uh, a definition of the animal and an explanation of what the animal is, where they're from, and so on and so forth. So, great, great game. Yeah, I just looked it up here. Um... Dennis, I had not heard of it before, but it really looks fascinating. It looks like there's a lot of, you know, you have to pay close attention, which we talked about that on most of the games we've mentioned today. But also um, just be uh, kind of st strategic. It makes you think a lot, it looks like anyway. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've heard of it, Debbie, or not. But this, I have this is heard of time. it before, but I'm going to look it up, too. I find that interesting. I'm so glad you shared it with us today. See, this is why we do the shows, because we can't remember everything you know and that's why we we count on the take two family to contribute and to add to it because we have new listeners we have young families very important so thank you so much dennis sorry we gave you the wrong name at the at the start <laughs> no problem <laughs> have a great it's day a, thanks it's a know. good name though kenneth is a strong name too it's my dad's name actually it is yeah kenneth warren know. usher yeah I didn't know that. I never knew that. I've hmm. I've been I've been uh, doing ministry with you for what thirteen years. I never knew that his name was Kenneth. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know what? That oh, that's interesting. Now wait a minute. You see where I'm circling back? Okay. So so Dennis called in. It was it was a misprint, and Kenneth came up, and you shared on air a message to your dad. Do you think that could be confirmation oh, from the yeah. good Lord? Could be absolutely. Pretty interesting, huh? Smart thinking, Deb. Wow. Well, we've got a lot of responses uh, from you sharing from your heart to your dad. A oh, lot of responses. People were very moved by your by your uh, connection to your father. Oh, thank God for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. That's interesting. See, our good Lord is working through the Holy Spirit. Okay, where are we going next? We're going to go to Nello in Wincrest, Texas, listening to us on Guadalupe Radio Network. Hello, Nello. Thanks for calling. Hey there. Uh, first of all, um, uh, Italian from Panama. I'm 84 years old, and boy, did we play board games, I tell you. Uh -huh. First of all, there was Monopoly, of course. Mm -hmm. And then there was Parcheesi. And there was a spin off of Parcheesi called Pollyanna, because Pollyanna was a famous uh, uh, book character, <laughs> okay? And then there was Bingo, of course, and there was something like Bingo called Lotto. Right. And then right. Lotto, mm -hmm. and then card games. My goodness, there was war. Did you all oh. play that? Where you, yes. you got, sure, yes. war. Yes, and okay. re remember, remember Slapjack? Slapjack, that, that's kind of new for us. Slapjack mm -hmm. was new. <laughs> and, the, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm 84, but the, the other things was you all call it, uh, we called it memory. You called it subconcentration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We called it memory. And then we right. played another one. I don't know if it was local or what was called the clock, and you put 12 cards around like in a clock, and you picked up one, and you either were wiped out or something, or if you were successful, you could pick up all 12 cards. Does anybody remember that? Mm. And uh, wow. what was? And then uh, there was uh, follow the beam, which was airplanes landing. It was like a board. It was a board game, and there was yeah. also a one called uh, well the the horse. Horse races, the racetrack. Oh yeah, Wait. yeah. <laughs> wow. Nello, you have given us a trip down memory lane here, as you all have. Charlie and Raleigh uh, thought about Sky Joe. Uh, so that's, that's what Charlie was going to mention. Sorry, I would love to get on the program, Charlie, but when Ace McKay, our producer, runs this music, that means we got to run as well. Mm-hmm. Because Dr. Ray is up next. <laughs> Remember, you were the warm-up act for Dr. Ray. That's right. Okay. <laughs> okay, what a great show. We will revisit it again. Thanks to the Take-Two family for taking part in this wonderful show about board games. Until tomorrow, have a beautiful and blessed day. We ask St. Joseph, please pray for us. The most original and exclusive Catholic content is on EWTN Radio. I'm continuing.